those parents were so precious. I mean, everybody knew that from the moment they met those parents and the beautiful scene when we prayed with the parents and took the baby to the OR. And when they finally got to walk in, dad went over to the baby, kissed the baby, and mom just, I was just overwhelmed and fell to the bed. We were doing a cast and all of a sudden, you know, John Cooper Schmidt, the surgeon, comes and goes, hey, Kirk, we got a, a tat who's having problems out there. So I walk in and they already have her on the bed. She basically was about ready to pass out. Kira was really blue. She was really sick. So John and I are in the screen. We're saying, OK, we can't do a full repair, but she's likely going to die if we don't find some way to get more pulmonary blood flow to her. She so easily has those spells, yeah. and that puts her at risk for dying suddenly. We decided the best way to help her was to give her an additional source of pulmonary blood flow. To completely repair her is very, very complex. I think probably the safest thing for us to do is to actually give her a shunt. Doing BT shunts, though, they're not without their difficulties. Every benefit you get out of a BT shunt, you pay with, with, <laughs> with prayer, with sweat, with nervousness. We've done this in another country, and the procedure didn't go as, as well. The child lived and is, is thriving now, but I just remember it being a very difficult case, and so I was kind of just nervous. But the decision was, even though it was a risk, this is a life-saving procedure when you can't do the complete repair and balancing it that, yes, we're going to take this high-risk girl. She's very blue, can spell at any time. She could arrest on us. It was a great case. She was a bigger girl. The vessels are bigger. We can use bigger shunts. It's not as difficult to recover her postoperatively. Great one to teach the Kurdish physicians how to do. This is something they've never seen, they've never done. So you teach them how to do this one. They can take this and, and, and treat a ton of kids across this country. off bypass, so she's got a limited amount of pulmonary blood flow to begin with. And the first thing I do is I test clamp the pulmonary artery. She tolerated that pretty well. And when we opened the shunt, saturations rose into the mid to high 90s. Uh, we brought her out of the operating room a little more awake, and the saturations are settling out in the 80s right now, which is perfect for her. Kira was in ICU, and she started to desat and she was getting low. Everyone's looking to see, is the shunt flowing? Is there blood around the heart? Is there blood around the, the vessels to the lungs? What's going on? We have echoes, we have chest x-rays. Something's causing her sacks This is one of the, sometimes the hardest things to teach uh, people how to take care of these kids is that you can't wait on these episodes. When they come, you've got to act right away. And if you don't act right away, you might lose the child. Our x-ray suggests some bleeding closer to the sternum also. We're gonna take her back and evacuate that hematoma. And they finally took her back to the OR. I'm working on it. I'm getting her pressure up. She had some bleeding. You have the nailing? Children with chronic cyanosis, often their clotting factors don't work as well. And so after she got back to the ICU, under her bandage, she started bleeding. That probably compromised her airway in some way. Got her recovered, finally got the bleeding stopped. And next morning, we walk in, and she has a beautiful smile on her face. These kids can die suddenly on us, and we're giving them life at the same time teaching. So it's incredible. It is like the best of both worlds where you're able to teach. But we have a live patient that we're going to say, OK, here we're going to do it. And at the end of our classroom, you've got a kid out there who now his life's transformed. And so tomorrow, they'll have a little bit more experience, a little bit more confidence, and can do things a little bit safer. 
building the country. It can't be with one person or two person. We are belonging a family. So I'm, I'm just praying for doctors who will work similar way what you do and then use that information to treat our children. You'll see the big difference in a couple of years' time.